Bam. Bam, bam, bam. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Palmisano here. And uh, tonight we're going to see Goose in DC. Today is Wednesday. And um, my wife Annie and I have been looking forward to this for a long time. So if any of you out there are going to be at the show, please drop it in the comments. And if you see us out there, come say hello. I'd love to meet some of you in person. I know one of our fearless moderators, Ryan Storm, will be there. And looking forward to meet you, Ryan. And uh, thanks again for all your help that you do uh, on the channel. So I'm on the React Request page on Guitargate, punched in Goose for the search thing. Because you know what? We're just going to get in the mood. Typically, I don't listen to the band that I'm going to see that day. I just went and saw Tool last week. I didn't listen to Tool beforehand. But, you know, I just feel like listening to Goose today. I feel like doing a YouTube thing. I feel like letting you guys know that I'm going to be there. So I'm going to pick uh, this one, So Ready, uh, from Clint McCarver, a lifetime member. Thanks for being a lifetime member, Clint. Um, largely because he's from Charleston, South Carolina, or this show is rather, from 5621. He says, great version of a great tune. I'd love to know how to play some details from Rick and the boys. Let's hit the button, man. Thanks for being a subscriber. Oh my gosh, 1348. All right, we'll try to not start and stop too much. Let's just try to take it in and enjoy it and get in the vibe for tonight. Oh, buttons, 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 buttons. <laughs> Quick, this is an A minor vibe, ladies and gentlemen. Your basic, your basic groove here is you got A, and you got this little piece of C minor, or sorry, of C major and D major. I say that because this is the root and major third of D, root and major third of C. But with A in the bass, this becomes flat three and five, and this is four and six. So now, typically in A minor, you would have a flat six, right? You would have that F in there. So because we see a major six here, right? This makes me think a Dorian, which means our, key, our notes should be coming from the key of G major. Stay with me. So just think A minor, but F sharp instead of F. Just think it's D major. So I'm just grab that G to A and then up to the C. So we're guessing correctly here. On the back of my spine. Where we go tonight. Here's the wild card. You got this A, G, F major now. So now we're thinking, oh, maybe we're actually in A minor, right? The relative of C major, because we actually have a natural F instead of F sharp. But really what we're just doing is we're borrowing from that so we can get, do that chromatic kind of thing down to E7. And 
for all you out there that are wondering. How the heck does E7 with a major third work in A minor? Well, the whole purpose. The whole purpose of making this major, that G sharp instead of G, is to get that leading tone back to A. This is called harmonic minor. You could be borrowing it for a minute if you want. The whole idea is you're in a minor key. You want a stronger pull back to home base, which is A minor. So instead of playing E minor, you play E7. You make your G, G sharp. That is a half step below A where you're resolving to. That's the whole point of harmonic minor. It's just making your five chord have it have it, you know, have it have a major third so it gets the leading tone to pull back home. That's it. Then you groove. You, you can see you're firmly enduring. F sharping all day. So again, now we're going to F here. So we've abandoned the A Dorian thing and we're, we're, we're kind of borrowing from C major now, if you will. We're focusing on the F. So ready for this. So ready for this. You can think F Lydia. Just, 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 know, that, just know that in this part, you're, you're thinking G major triad, F major triad. You know you're gonna get to E7, but when you come back to your A minor vibe, when you finally resolve there, it's A Dorian. It's A with an F sharp in it, the major third of D. That's it. On the floor, you know that I'm coming back for more. The ticket stops. I'm running, baby, you know. Well, I'll do this. Yeah. on stage, congrats, bro. was cool. We modulated up. You went from A to C, I think, to D, and then to E, just kind of walked up, and Rick just kind of followed it up. We have to, this is too long a video, but go back in those parts and kind of figure out where those, where those lifts are, but if you just start by like what I did and following the bass line, guess in key, and then try to add the scales to it, you'll figure it out. Sound that gravity. Clap your hands, Charleston. To each his own.
see. Okay, so I think I was wrong before. Uh, unless they changed it this time, but I think I was just wrong before. So you're in A, right? Yeah. Up to B. C sharp. And then E flat. And then E, right? Or D sharp, and then E, however you want to look at it, right? So it wasn't... It wasn't um, uh, A, C, D, E was, or maybe it was, but this time at least, you know, you're following A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. So what happened in here? We moved. You can, and again, power of video here. You can hear we're still kind of in that A minor kind of thing, right? But you're distinctly hitting Fs in here now, not F sharp. So we've abandoned that A Dorian thing. So feel free, throw a little D minor in there. major seven, it's relative, right? Right there, there it is, right? That. So just, just know that so far, the key thing to pay attention to is are we Fing or F sharping? That's kind of the thing, okay? That's the modulation. It usually comes down to one note that's changing the function. That's usually, what happens, especially in these parallel kind of movements, like where it would be A Aeolian to A Dorian, right? So there's 87. Right? That still flies. So a couple things. One, uh, I love when he jumps off the keys and takes a guitar lead. There's such different styles, and I appreciate the different sounds too. 
lot of you have heard me uh, talk about this before, but when you're in a band that has two different guitars, especially if you have keys and a bunch of other stuff going on, it's usually a good idea if one person's playing humbuckers for the other person to have some single coil sounds, right? If somebody's got a, you know, a more atmos atmospheric kind of vibe, it kind of behooves you for the other sound to be more like, you know, uh, a, like a precision instrument, you know, to kind of cut through instead of all lofty and spacey to be, you know, right here I am. It, all those things to think about. I've mentioned it in the previous videos. One of my favorite things about this band is they really get those sound textures extremely well. And somehow they managed to find production people that get it uh, on the same page at, at, at just as high a level. Like it's a very polished, well thought out product that they're bringing around. That's why I'm stoked to see them. Um, I forgot what I was gonna point out here. Maybe it was this A minor arpeggio. <laughs> Maybe not, let's just keep going. like that right here. Hey. Okay. So they're going to start elevating again. It's clearly that they're changed that they're changing it. I wasn't completely wrong the first time. It's just it, it moves. I have to listen to it again to to really chart it out and, and figure it out. But it's clearly moving right now from A to B, right? So here's your A, minor third, C right fourth and he's doing this slide from two flat three four but thinking a minor is your tonic slides it up chromatically because what you're trying to get to is b minor right so now one two flat three four in b a lot of you out there are like how do i use chromatics you know it's so easy to use them uh, when, you know, connecting chord tones in melody lines, right? So like if you go like one, two, three on E, you can go, right? Because you're just chromatically getting to that note. But you can do it in this ascending fashion where you're not really making a melody, you're just creating tension. So you can take the same pattern and just push it, right? sudden you're in B. Love lines.
ride. Lights come on. There you go, Rick. Burn. It's just a hell of a band. It's, it's, you know, you know what it is? In this jam band, uh, I hate to even use that, in this scene, in this circuit, you know, there's, 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 you know, we embrace and we celebrate looseness and spontaneity. And of course, there's tons of that on display, but there's also an incredible amount of professionalism on display because, <laughs> Everything matches the the look, the lights, the smoke, the quality of the video. It's not just you know the production in the room. It's the production we're watching on YouTube here. It's the actual mix in the sound. It's it's how crafted the different sections are and how they complement each other. Right? It's it's just it's so purposeful. It's such a professional presentation of a product. That's why I think the band is exploding the way they are, because it's not this, it's not this loose, uh, it is loose, but it's, it's just, it's not this laissez-faire kind of attitude towards, towards um, this kind of scene. It's like, no, this is a serious band. We have all these different parts that we've chosen specifically, we've put them together in this specific way. We're gonna have fun each and every night and enjoy the spontaneous moments that happen and celebrate them. But don't, don't think for a second that we're not out here making a super professional product that is super polished, super clean, and we're proud of it. That's what shines through to me. I'll see you tonight. Cheers.